It's Friday the 13th. That means it's time for... Georgia Conspiracy Theories. <laughs> Shannon Scott joins me. He leads tours in Savannah, and he's a conspiracy theory enthusiast. Hey, Shannon. Good morning. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't think any state is particularly... Maybe Nevada, because it supposedly has Area 51, but is Georgia mm-hmm. particularly rich in conspiracy theories? Oh, yes. I mean, we are the 13th colony. Oh, interesting. Mm. And, you know, um, it was kind of a colony founded by mystics, the Freemasons. Okay, tell me more about that, because that means what about our history? We have kind of hidden rooms and and tunnels everywhere. Nicolas Cage is running about looking for treasure. Gosh, I hope so, because we need a good movie, you know, about that stuff. Um, I mean, out of Georgia anyway. But, you know, Savannah, Georgia, for example, you know, sits at the 30, 30 degree parallel, which um, basically is kind of in accordance with the, the grand master degree of the Freemasons. And, you know, when you really dial back like Georgia's founding, it's kind of like this mm, ancient prophecy of a continent from the times of Egypt, you know, sort of destined for the Masons. And they saw Savannah, Georgia as like the capital city, kind of the holy city, if you will. So, you know, you peel back the old narrative of, like, Oglethorpe and the colonists, and you really start to see that, you know, they were Freemasons of uh, very high order. Um, They believe that Savannah, for example, was on the same latitude lines as this in Palatine. And they were really ramping up kind of a utopian vision uh, for the colony of Georgia, which, you know, kind of gets skewed by yellow fever along the way. But there's a lot of, of that mystical heritage throughout the state and a lot of, you know, Masonic lodges throughout the state as well. So the Oglethorpe you mentioned is the original, James Edward Oglethorpe, who is the founder of the colony yes, of the Georgia. Yes, the founder of the colony. Yes, okay, the so tell me about a, a particular conspiracy theory. Well, um, I, you know, am particularly drawn to the Guidestones in Elberton, Georgia, which, you know, is the granite capital of the world, and they're, they're, they're sometimes called like the American Stonehenge, although you know, they were constructed, erected in 1979. And with the advent of the Internet since, let's say, 1979, there have been a lot of things hurled at the Guidestones, suggesting that they bear inscription, kind of uh, testament of the New World Order and the Illuminati and a lot of nefarious dark things. But when you start to really kind of look at the Guidestones' position in Elberton, Georgia, They really do speak to some benevolent things. and I mean, the man who constructed them, he identified himself as R.C. Christian, which is kind of a throw to um, Christian Rosencruz of basically Austria in the 17th century, who was kind of a a founding member of, of an order called the Rosicrucian Order, which is a very benevolent spiritual order. Um, so I think a lot of the nefariousness that is put on to the Guidestones of Georgia <clears throat> is really more Internet overthinking, if that makes sense. Well, let's hear one of those. Um, uh, some people think they are directions for creating that new world order that you're describing. Here is Paul Joseph Watson, who is an editor and writer for Infowars.com. The most sure. ominous guideline reads, quote, Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature, a figure which, of course, couldn't possibly be achieved without either mass genocide or draconian and long-lasting programs of population control even more extreme than the one-child policy in China. I mean, for a conspiracy theory to persist, it has to be something like the Guidestones where there's some sort of mystery involved, right? Right. Correct. And, and Joseph Paul Watson is an amazing journalist, and I, and I actually know him and have met him, and I do follow him as well. Um, but that said, I, you know, we haven't, he and I have not talked about the Georgia Guidestones together. But, <laughs> you know, when you look at the Rosicrucian Order, um, the, the particular inscriptions on the Guidestones, and there, there are many on different faces of the stones, but they're basically tenets or philosophy expressed in um, ancient writings of, of Imhotep, the, uh, the pharaoh of Egypt, and the perception of the world from, let's say, you know, the late 18th dynasty of Egypt was, the, you know, let's say not as, as we know the world today. So this was an ancient pharaoh leader, basically. He was, he was chancellor at, to, the, to pharaoh in the third yes, dynasty. Yeah, yeah, correct. Sorry, correct. He is looking at 
the world through you know the eyes of them and what would be in harmony with natural law. So that's yeah. really where that stuff stems from, you know. And I'm and I'm very well acquainted with the Rosicrucians and and let's just say their philosophy and outlooks and. And I don't think there's anything nefarious to the Geistons at all. All right. Well, then let's talk about something which may be nefarious. There, There is supposedly a Loch Ness type of monster in Georgia. Tell me about that. Uh, sure. The the Altamaha River uh, and River Basin around Darien, Georgia, you know, below Savannah, close to Florida, um, you know, has for the past 2,000 years, there's been recognition from the Wally Indians to, you know, early colonists and, and modern-day fishermen, let's say, talking about a creature which I think in the 20th century they've given kind of a um, a cheeky name to the Ultima Haha, get it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but I mean, I've, I've actually seen, in my opinion, I've seen the Ultima Haha, um, and it does fit the description of, let's say, the reptilian uh, creature that has been sighted in those waters. So for... here's a little clip of a video that also says they have proof. This is proof that there's a lot next monster somewhere in Georgia. You see a big hump over there? It's not a gator. It looks like a whale. Not sure what's going on. My guest is Savannah Tour Guide Shannon Scott, and of course we want to hear your favorite conspiracy theory. Um, Robert Grizzle tweets, his favorite modern conspiracy theory, at least, is uh, FEMA de- detention camps. Bruce Scherer says his fave is FLOTUS is transgender, which is those not true. But <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> let's talk about some, there are, are conspiracy theories that lasted for years and years and years and ended up being true. Um, I wanted to bring in this clip. Uh, this is President Bill Clinton apologizing for the Tuskegee syphilis study at the White House. Uh, this uh, was recorded on, in May of 1997. What was done cannot be undone, but we can end the silence. We can stop turning our heads away. We can look at you in the eye and finally say on behalf of the American people, What the United States government did was shameful, and I am sorry. So the Tuskegee syphilis experiments were a conspiracy for a very long time, and people did not believe them. Um, Right. So, and yet people, what keeps people, persistent people, returning to try and find that proof? I think it's a, a basic love for humanity and humankind and the right to life, let's say. That, does that fit all the conspiracy theory? Does that fit even the search for, no. let's say, the Loch Ness or the Alta Mahaha? Well, I think that's human curiosity and wanting to, you know, I think that the, the curiosity part is connecting dots and following the trail and and being enlightened and excited by the information you find. I mean, granted, people have different attitudes in that. I mean, some have a malevolent view of everything. Some have a benevolent view. Some are open to both. You know, so I think the curious nature. But when I think of the Tuskegee, you know, nothing breaks my heart more. And, you know, it's like I weep inside for all the families that lost, you know, because they put trust in, you know, men who showed up with the needles, you know. And and there's a Georgia connection to that uh, yes, story. There is. Yeah, there's a wonderful wildlife center off the, off the coast of Georgia near Savannah, a few miles, uh, called the Oatland Island Wildlife Center, which is a remarkable wildlife institution and kind of our zoo, if you will, although, you know, they don't like that word. I don't really either, but, um, but you know, the, the, it's the pre CDC structure, you know, where, where the department of defense was overwatching a lot of experiments and looking to weaponize probably certain bacteria and things like that. But in the 1940s, there were a lot of women, children, Mexican prostitutes and different people that died on Oakland Island, um, who had, either contracted syphilis or may have been given syphilis. But the blood work of those experiments, the notorious Tuskegee, were um, done there at Oakland Island. We have another tweet from Black Physicist who says uh, a favorite conspiracy theory is anything that involves the Illuminati, uh, which often comes up when you're talking about the Masons. But there is a more tangible uh, conspiracy theory that still exists in Georgia, and that's about the Atlanta child murders. Uh, Those were making national headlines. Um, Here's a story from NBC News in 1981, and the, the public still has a lot of questions about that case. 
For almost two years, the bodies have kept coming out of Atlanta's rivers and woods, and week after week, police speak of sorrow and sympathy, but not a solution. It's just a tragic, horrible nightmare that we're going through. We're not in a position today to make an arrest. There are cases in history that have gone on much longer than this has. So there is already someone who was arrested and convicted for at least two of those murders. That's Wayne Williams. And yet conspiracy theories persist surrounding the Atlanta child murders. Why? Well, because it it was such a corrupt investigation. Um, You know, there's nothing that really ties Wayne Williams overall to all of the murders that were going on in and around Atlanta at the time. I mean, he was definitely involved with a satanic group. He was also, and this is on public record, that he was CIA. Um, and I kind of see him as a, a patsy within probably a major child prostitution ring with probably some big names tied to it. Uh, but, I mean, after Wayne Williams was arrested, I mean, in prison, 25 other murders of the same style uh, happened in Atlanta. And, and, of course, as you probably know, that was, I believe Atlanta was the murder capital of the uh, country at that time. So you believe there's still a, there's still a killer out there? I believe there are multiple killers out there, and that's because um, sad, sadly, um, child sex rings are humongous in the world, and even in this country, as as much as that you know pains me. Shannon Scott leads tours in Savannah, a uh, storyteller. In fact, you're headed off to a tour now, right? Soon? I am. It's a beautiful morning here in Savannah. It's hot as heck, but I'm going to put on the uh, the black couture suit. And, and go be out careful. And... Wear your lucky charms because it's Friday the 13th, Shannon. <laughs> Stay safe. Yes, yes. Have a safe one. <laughs> you too.